We were. There we go. Okay, let's call <laughs> let's call the meeting to order at 704 p.m. <laughs> All right, let's do the let's do the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's have a moment of silent reflection, please. Thank you. Sunshine Law, in accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, public meetings may be held in person or by means of communication equipment to include streaming services and other online meeting platforms. This meeting is being held in person and through the Zoom meeting platform, being broadcast from Borough Hall, 748 River Road, Fairhaven, New Jersey. Public participation for this regular council meeting of November 8th, 2021 is available by call and phone number or through web conference Zoom. Members of the public will be on mute until it is time for questions or comments, which will be announced. At that time, the public has the opportunity to question, comment by phone or through Zoom by the raise hand button and will be called on at the appropriate time. Notice of this meeting was included in a schedule of meetings, which was adopted by resolution number 2021-13 and sent to the Asbury Park Press, the Two River Times, the Hub, and the Star Ledger on January 7th, 2021, posted on the borough website, the bulletin board in the municipal building, and has remained continuously posted as required under the statute. With adequate notice having been given, the borough clerk is directed to include this statement in the minutes of this meeting. Allison, may I have a roll call, please? Council members, Chris Murphy. Here. Notch. Here. McKay. Here. McHugh. Here. Smith. Rodriguez. Here. Administrator Ponsegran, Engineer Bordella, Attorney Tannen, and Chief Bordella Norris. Okay, I'd like to start, start with the random acts of beauty. Um, I'm wondering, is Terry Simbali, Casey Abel, or Richard Dernacki here? Can you guys come up as well, please? And we have the three families joining us via Zoom, the Bailon family, the Saipa family, and, the, and uh, Patty, I think, and Dos and Ditos. Uh, sure. All right, we're going we're gonna to read a proclamation here on the Random Acts of Beauty. Whereas members of the Garden Club of Ferryman broke through town, identifying front and side yard properties with gardens that contain colorful and attractive flowers of horticulture, and whereas residences, garden plots, and businesses were eligible for this award, whereas members of the Garden Club chose the following residences, business, and community garden plot as recipients of the Random Access Duty Award. The winners were the Taylor residents. The Taylor residents here. Yeah. The Guariglia residents will come on. Thank you. Um, the Leech residents, they on Zoom? You want, you want, you want residents? I think they're on Zoom. On Zoom? Yes. But I, I, I don't see them on here unless they're under a telephone number. Okay, we're, we're going to mail oh, this. Yeah, yeah. Mail this to you. Congratulations. I know. And the Magnuson residents also on Zoom? Magnuson? No? no. On Zoom? <laughs> also in the garden plots category, uh, Andrew and Sarah Stipa. They're on Zoom. Uh, Sarah's on Zoom. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And Patty uh, from uh, Dos Bandidos is also on Zoom. Okay. Congratulations. The mayor of council and the Garden Club of Fairhaven wish to recognize these residents, business, and garden plot owner for making Fairhaven a beautiful place to be. 
So I just want to thank all of you, you know, for, for these random acts of beauty. I'm sure you've worked hard to put them together, and a lot of people take them for granted, but obviously not everyone. This is a beautiful town, and you guys are in a lot. Of it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, workshop session. Uh, this is an annual request from the Fair Association to post lawn signs for Small Business Saturday, uh, which is on November 27th, and holiday stroll, which is on December 10th. There would be 30 lawn signs for each event placed 10 days prior to each event. Also a banner for each event to be posted at the entrance to Fairhaven River Road. Do we have any motion. questions? Oh, I'd like to make a motion. Okay, uh, second. Oh. Um, Dermer Dreams had also asked for a banner um, uh, posted at the entrance to Fairhaven and we couldn't do that because of the, the poles and the way it was all set up. So what we did with them was we had them run the banner east-west along River Road. Perhaps we could suggest that the um, uh, business association does the same thing. I don't know that they um, they wanted to go across the street though. That was the that was the problem with Dermer. I think right. they wanted to go across the I think the I top think. of the street. I think I saw the Dermer banner was already yeah. up to them. Yeah, it is it is up. I think they're just putting it right where Dermer's yeah. is on the okay, side of the road. Right by, it's close to Schweiker's pond over there. Yeah, because it says at the entrance, so I was okay. envisioning it across yeah. the road. You good with that, Betsy? Yeah, any, any other questions? No. Motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, we also have a request from the Columbus Club to post lawn signs in three different locations advertising their November 11th blood drive. Does anyone have any questions on that? Motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, moving on to 2021 Small Ticket Capital. Teresa? Uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, this is actually a little more expensive than Small Ticket Capital um, after our uh, finance meeting the other day. And as requested, Mayor, I sent some backup out to the full governing body. And it will actually end up being the Finance Committee report um, under the business with the absence of Councilman Neff here. Um, we met the Finance Committee last, met last Thursday, and as we have been doing on uh, an ongoing basis is uh, looking forward at uh, not only 2022 budgeting, but uh, our three year capital plan uh, budgeting to be upgraded. Um, we've had the various department heads uh, in to present to uh, the finance committee. And the uh, um, this past Thursday, uh, Rich Bardella presented for both engineering and public works. Um, I did send a separate spreadsheet Rich had done where he uh, Went over his what we like to call small ticket or budgeted capital that we pay with pay for out of money we budget every year, uh, and then he also did a broader one for a large ticket or bondable capital. Um, I have the same request from multiple departments, which I put in a spreadsheet for you when it comes to budgeting capital. Just to do a, a recap for you, currently our balance in budgeted capital is five hundred eighteen zero four five. Um, that actually is, uh, you know, from prior years up to and including what we budgeted this year in 2021. Um, you'll see each department, the police is looking for 53,800 for stun guns, car cameras, the alpha test machine that was presented to finance and also to uh, the police committee. Public Works uh, is looking for a new vehicle for the director, noting that uh, the vehicles uh, that the bridge currently has will be transferred down to Parks and Recreation. Uh, the Parks and Recreation being from the GJ Drive is about 13 years old. It's an original hybrid and it's, uh, it's really um, on its last legs. Uh, Rich is, Rich is about three years old, Rich? Four, Four years old. Uh, and then uh, Rich is also looking for um, loader accessories. Uh, Parks and Recreation, this is the only one that is up, you know, still up in the air. I think Councilwoman uh, Koch and uh, Commissioner Keith may want to speak to that. We do need to put something in, in the community center fields. We've had multiple discussions up here in public and with various council members. And I think the general feeling is, um, you know, Parks and Rec had initially looked at 
you know, a, a much higher price point uh, to upgrade um, the facilities over there for um, rec and uh, for the playground equipment. But uh, in light of the fact that we're going to be doing major construction over there, I think the general consensus was that they wanted to replace what was there, but not take a full look at that entire park until that construction was done uh, for a variety of reasons. So I'll leave it to the governing body members to determine. I know uh, I think Councilman Koch and, and Councilman Crystal Keith had some uh, various uh, options they were looking at. Fire Department is looking for uh, Scott Air Packs. Uh, and then for Borough Hall, I put in the carpet for the main offices, the steps, uh, and the hallway. Uh, it's in disrepair, and if it's left much longer, I, I fear we've got some possible tripping hazards up there. Um, that total, um, if we allocate $50,000 to Parks and Rec for playground equipment, comes to 198.8 out of your 518.045 balance that you have available uh, for this current year. Um, we did talk about possibly whether or not we were going to move forward with the bond ordinance. I sent uh, an email to the governing body uh, last week, and I think the general consensus coming out of the finance committee was um, that uh, the timing was such that in order to really move forward with the bond ordinance in this year, we need to have it locked and loaded and give me direction tonight. And I, I think it's probably with a lot of things that are still up in the air, uh, considering also uh, including facilities, that waiting till the new year to move forward with the bond ordinance after the governing body gets some more time to uh, do some strategic planning and speak to each other with some other issue is probably the most uh, prudent way to go. So off of tonight's meeting, I'm really only looking for uh, guidance in what you want to put on for purchase authorizations for the next meeting for um, budget, small ticket of budget capital, which would be this spreadsheet uh, that I just spoke about. So um, the you know, purchase authorization are very simple. They would just list them by department. We would say uh, what the uh, items were and the amount you know, not to exceed. And then we would put a um, fund certification in from the CFO showing that we have the funds available um, at the next meeting on a resolution. So um, that's that's your small ticket in a nutshell. I'm certainly um, willing to answer any questions. The only other thing um, I wanted to talk about was um, the governing body, if you recall, um, gave uh, authorization back in April in uh, resolution 2021-121, which was to advertise receipt of bids for our 2021 road project, road sidewalk and drainage project. At the time when we discussed that with the governing body, uh, the items that we had discussed being included in that uh, were the drainage over in the Buckwood area. It was um, repairs the sidewalks in the gentry, repairs the sidewalks in the historic district. Um, since then, I think um, the governing body has had some thoughts on whether or not they want to um, change that scope of work, possibly. Oh, it was also for um, hunting lane, was also in that original. Uh, and it wasn't in the actual resolution, but that's when, when Rich made his presentation. That's what we were talking about. So I don't know. Um, Rich had done another assessment looking at uh, what each one of those were looking to cost. Um, hunting lane, 75,000. Park lane drainage, 225. Sidewalks of the Gentry, 50,000, historic, 35. And then we actually had some thoughts in there. You know, he usually put something in there if and where directed for curbing um, that he had in there in the amount of um, $20,000 and then possibly um, looking at putting curbs down and, uh, and sidewalks down by the Norman Park. So all told, um, that's about um, $435,000 of the capital. We have 453,292 left in our previous bond ordinance authorizations, and we have um, approximately $60,000 in our um, sidewalk trust fund. So I think for our next meeting, it would make sense, depending on the direction of the governing body night, to amend 2021, 121, and possibly revise that scope of work to whatever direction the governing body is looking to go to. 
Um, I'll let Rich speak to the timing, but if we put that resolution on the next agenda, Mike, that tells me Rich would need probably 60 to 90 days to design that, probably a little more because it, it's like designing five different projects. It's not like one road project. So let's just say mm -hmm. it's 90 days to design it. Then you'd look to go out to bid. Sometimes I would imagine in March, you know, award the bid, you know, four weeks later and probably start that work in uh, June, June timeframe, give or take. So that's pretty much where we are with capital, small, long, uh, large ticket and um, road projects. And sure. I'm just happy to answer any questions or take your direction how you want to proceed for the next meeting on those two resolutions. Teresa, we spoke today about the sidewalk from uh, Oak Lawn to Harrison. Yes, we did cancel the couch. Uh, you know, I know we, there was some talk on whether or not uh, we want to do a full um, sidewalk upgrade from Prospect to, um, I guess, Bird Sanctuary, or whether we want to do just um, Oklahoma to Harrison. I think it's probably fair to say, um, unless you want to do a delay, um, and Rich is welcome to jump in here, unless you want to delay the gentry or the, or the uh, historic district upgrades, you probably would need to pass uh, your bond authorization to do the full scope from prospect or we pass the bird sanctuary. Oh. I just want to ask Rich, is there a substantial savings to doing that whole stretch at one time as opposed to just finishing the one section to connect the wall? I think the, the first segment is enough work if it's been in our annual road sidewalk and drainage program that it, it doesn't need necessarily need an economy of scale that you're referring to no. the only question is do we just do Oakland to harrison or do we do that first section prospect to harrison and then phase two would be from harrison heading east to tie into the sidewalks at rutgers across the bird sanctuary so we can divide it up however um I haven't completed the cost estimates for that full run yet. We have only looked at that one segment. So um, could we could we get that one segment in in with, with this particular project and then go back? I mean, we did Third Street in in stages and we did River Road in stages, but at least get those kids from Oak Lawn to Harrison, give them a safe route to get to the sidewalks on Harrison. We can, we just have to look at the other locations that the administrator had mentioned earlier that we had slated for 2021, oh, which included could, the Gentry and the Fairhaven Road piece. Could we add that to this? Just add that piece? I would need Rich's updated estimates because you know, we, we came in probably about 20% higher on Willow than we thought we were going to. So. Um, I just to make sure we have enough money authorized. That's all. It, it's not saying it's not doable. We just have to redefine the scope of work and what's going to actually be that. Right. Uh, you know. So that's what I'm saying. Project. You kept it small and didn't didn't go for a big project from Prospect to Harrison. And just. I think that was about ninety or hundred k. The last look, that section there. About the only k. thing we can suggest is if we keep. The existing scope, which the bulk of it was hunting and then the park main drainage that tied Buttonwood all the way to Fairhaven Road. And then looked at some of that if and where directed for the gentry and the Fairhaven Road, which I had mentioned at a prior meeting, those folks have been waiting, you know, as well. There is an option to bid it as an alternate or as an option. You know. So at least we can get a project awarded through this bond authorization or the funding that's allocated in the coming months rather than you know because if you remember we've been we've already been authorized to bid the project mm -hmm. as a 2021 job but then we had to we, we slipped the, the willow street piece in in the meantime so my recommendation you know bid it maybe bid a base bid have an option if the you know if the estimates are they're, they're close we don't want to get into a situation where we say, all right, it's going to cost this much money, and then it comes in a little over, and we don't have enough. You know, at least let's get something if we moving. Uh, the the cost. And, and I'm, 
forget too, we do have, I mean, if, if we're reasonably conservative, I mean, you'll spend the entire amount of the um, parks, you know, up to the, the 268 that are put in there. If you, if you did a big piece of equipment at the Center Field, we would have a little extra money in our page go capital if we had to supplement it a little bit. I think what might make sense now to try to put that resolution on the next meeting, but how about Rich prepares new estimates for the next meeting? For each of the lines that we talked about, and then you guys can give us a direction at the next meeting, and we'll put that authorization on the December meeting okay. to to move forward. It'll still be in, you know, it'll still be in this year. Would your work include that space, that area? Yeah, and then from Oakland to Harrison. The only thing I want to add is we just finished Harrison. We did the striping this past week. The contract will pretty much submitted a final payment, so you'll. Possibly at the next meeting, I'll have a final change order so we'll know where we are. And I anticipate that actually coming in a little under than what we thought it was. So we have a little room in that appropriation. So. There's room in a few, but we have to pass, we have to amend the ordinances. But I, I'm not, I, I think if Rich brings the essence in next time around, I think we'll be okay to get your go ahead for, for that micro project scope of work for what you're looking to accomplish. Okay. And then, um, as far as the small ticket capital goes, I mean, you have the spreadsheet in front of you. If you're okay with everything, you just really the only thing I think that's in any kind of flux is the um, how much you want to spend on the on the community center field piece of equipment. Did you? So, uh, can I just jump in before we move to that? Sure. Kind of I, ahead, I'm sorry. I, I missed what you said. How much did we have? Do we have available for our road projects? Uh, right now. We have available 453.292, and that was from ordinance uh, 2020 12. And we have some a little bit for drainage left over in 2018 21. And if I heard you correctly, the hunting park, gentry, historic, and if and we're directed on the curb, Willow Street project. Not Willow. No. I'm sorry. Hands <laughs> tuning. Oh, what, what, what was the total for the 435? That was hunting 75, Park yep. Lane 225, yep. Gentry 50, mm -hmm. Historic District 35, yep. and then Rich had if and where directed for curbs and sidewalks. That means he, he points out different areas where he might have a, a problem, and he had 30K in for uh, <laughs> curbs and sidewalks at the end of the limit. Okay, so that does not include the Willow Street, that's yeah. a separate authorization. Now Will, Willow's already been authorized done. and done. And the same with Hanson and Cooney? Yes, that's all That's all done. Okay. So, and there could potentially be leftover money in Hanson There could, but it's not like, uh, you know, if I do a generic, we, if you guys authorize a generic ordinance that just roads and sidewalks, like we did in, you know, 2020, 12, mm -hmm. then we can use it anywhere. But when we do a bond ordinance that's specific to a grant in a particular street, that's then... Good. It has it has to be reappropriated. You'll have money left over, but I got to go to bond council and say I've got these. Usually we do it once a year, once every eighteen months. We go to bond council and say I've got five ordinances yeah. here, and these are my balances. Uh -huh. And then he'll re we'll cancel it or reappropriate it. I can cancel it by resolution if we want to reappropriate another ordinance. We need so then, if I'm understanding this correctly, or tell me if I'm missing something, based on the numbers we have. All the road projects we just talked about are covered with the exception of Oakland. True. That's true. Okay. And so, to the right. Okay. So, then to the extent that there is, I'm sorry. And we have 60K in somewhere. Right. And we have, okay. Above and beyond. What's left over? But, right. but, but if we wanted to prioritize, book one over another project, sure. we could slide it. You could, right. right. So I think what Council on the is saying makes sense then, because it sounds like there's some give in terms of the money that's currently available for road projects to bid that as an option. But I also think it makes sense to have discussion as to whether or not other pieces of that should be an option or if we need to amend the resolution because if there is a lesser priority that we would prefer to be the option, maybe none of them have the options. Maybe we're gonna have enough money left to bid them back, right? But if there's a priority that's lesser than Oak One, Oak One should not be the only option because that's the only movable piece. Maybe there's other pieces that we could say, you know, in another six months wouldn't be okay. 
Understood. Just um, a suggestion. Yeah. Not that I want to create more work for anybody, but we have to have sufficient funds even to authorize the bid. But I'm fairly confident when Rich does these numbers again, and if he puts the if and where and there's already curbs down the bottom, um, and we look at what we have in the sidewalk fund, I don't think we'd like maybe at best 10 grand short, and we could probably pick that up from Patient Go Capital. Right. So I don't think, I think it'll be a productive discussion next week when Rich does, two weeks from now, when Rich does his estimates. Okay. And you guys take a look at those, and then we'll go ahead and try to get that resolution on the next, uh, on the December agenda. Okay, so that's the road, that's the road project piece of the that, yes. Pay As You Go Capital. Uh, no, that, that Pay As You Go. Road projects are separate. Yeah, they're they're bonded capital. How did you get from the one to the other? Now I'm confused. How did you get the one to the other? No, 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 we were talking about. We were talking about pay as you go. We, we kind of closed that. And then we talked about the fact that we weren't going to move forward with uh, a, a 2021 bond audits because we didn't have right. sufficient time. But in the meantime, we had that other resolution from April okay. that was strictly the micro project, road projects, and we could move forward with them by amending that scope of work. Okay, so can we, unless anybody has more road stuff, can we jump back to the page Chris, capital? Do you have mm -hmm. I, I do, but not until you're done. I'm just going back to page go capital. So if it's road okay. related, we should check that off the list no, first. It's not. Um, I just had a question about the fire department. Um, I think these are air packs for emergency responses, Scott's. Scott Airfax, Mike, do you know what that means, or maybe the chief? I think they just it's, they it's just Scott Airfax. Basically, they what they were on the ground. Scott Airfax, they both side of the house. Okay, yeah, and they need them. Obviously, I'm in yeah. support of that. I just wanted to make sure what I was reading. I yeah, understood what I was reading. Scott Airfax, what they were the They try to replace three or four a year. Yeah. Okay. So they just rotate like. Them. I think I ask this question every year. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was one of my questions. At least you're consistent. Good question. I don't know what the Scott part is, but I get the air pack part. That's it. That's all I have. Do you have another question? Uh, a couple more on uh, Paseo Capital. Teresa, the carpet for Borough Hall, it's the main floor, all the offices, hallway, stairs, yes. library. Not library. Library is 13 library. grand on its own. Okay. And, and not, not, here. not down here. Either. Okay. I thought we kind of phase it, maybe do those two next year if need be. And the library's not in that bad of shape. Don't forget, there's got so many shelf racks in there. There's not a whole lot of open property there. We okay. might be repurposing this room, so I'm not it might sure. be. We don't want to you go too know crazy. What you're going to need yet, exactly. Right? Right. And I wouldn't even ask for upstairs, except you'll see there's a places where it's actually splitting, and if it starts to move up and someone trips on it, we'll get to make no mistake that. Um, I guess the, my only other question or discussion point would be regarding parks and racks. Um, are we tabling the discussion on that or well, where does this stand? I was going to suggest I have a couple of options from DJ. There's one, uh, first of all, I don't think we should invest in a lot in that field until we know exactly what's going to happen with the police department. They're going to need areas to stage their equipment because they're going to be using the entire parking lot. Um, but I have one, one option here from DJ. Uh, it's a, a fairly large structure. I can pass it down to you. And, and it has um, an age range of 2 to 12. It's made up of several parts. And it's about $50,000. So, Is that installed? Yeah, that's the, that's that's the whole amount. Yeah. <laughs> so... I would like to suggest that that you know because the current structure there is not usable, it's broken, that we replace it with something like that. But agree to keep it to a minimum of fifty or fifty-five thousand dollars, and not put any more money into the community center until we know how it's going to play out with the construction. Well, that may be preserved, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's in that, pieces, yes, right. So move. Yeah. So if if you know. Yeah, so it works. Yeah, with yeah. any future um, design. Right. Yeah. And, and I don't know if you could take those apart and put them back together and still have um, the same uh, risk mitigation. The integrity of the yeah. structure. I would just not okay. Well, I've been assumption. asking DJ to talk to the to the yeah. installers to to you know. We should move it away from if we can find a spot. Can, yeah. yeah, that would be my recommendation. Try not yes. to take it apart. Yeah. But those fields are pretty pretty heavily used. We need something for the younger kids to. We need something there for yeah. sure. I think waiting until we're completely done is yeah. too long. Yeah, yeah. I'm also going to throw out there. It mm -hmm. does sound from talking to DJ like with supply chain as it is, 
even if we order it today, it's not like we're getting it next week. Right. We might right. be waiting a few months. And then ground freeze. So, yeah. so if, if we, yeah. you know, we got to make a decision because even if we want it for springtime, yeah. we, we got to yeah. make a decision and get some of the ground so the kids have somewhere to play. Um, so. Tina should know the answer as to whether or not it can be moved. And okay. if she doesn't know it, she's happens to be our resident uh, playground equipment expert. <laughs> You'll probably get a quick answer. And um, nothing says that you have to move it even in the, in, you know, if you yeah. do those fields in three, four years. Right. You just might build around it. Right. Sure. Uh, yeah. and, and to Council President uh, Rodriguez, it, it is true. Once they get to be a certain age, taking them all apart and reassembling them can become problematic. Sort of like a crib. Nobody yeah, wants to take around. the liability for that. Yeah. If, if it's not exactly smooth when they move it and some kid gets hurt. So, no, I get that. Um, yeah. but, I, but I do think you might, you, you very well might be able to leave it where it is and then augment it with other things that you want to do over that part. Right. Sure. And, and Councilman Rodriguez suggested correctly that we should probably move it yeah. as far away from the area as we can get away with. Yeah, Rich can take a, a, a over there with DJ and they can figure out exactly where the best spot for it is. And they take the other one down. But I would like to I I, I would like to limit the cost, you know, keep it to 50 oh. or 55. Um if possible. Oh, well, we know his PD is the only the only one up in the air is parks and rec. You want to make it 60 just to cover ourselves. He's looking at a couple other things. Not to exceed. Not to exceed. Okay. okay. Then I'll go and then, and then that'll I'll put that next resolution on the, on the next agenda for those purchase authorizations. And we should look at it tomorrow night at the rec meeting. Well, I was going to yeah. say yeah, we have a meeting tomorrow night. Perfect. So. Yeah, and um, a lot of times too, I know they have sales and discounts. Right. So maybe we can catch one of those. Maybe a lot of other communities are not looking at putting playgrounds now. It's a good time to take up the opportunity. Okay. Great. Can I just ask if we, maybe you can ask Tina? Yeah. Are any of these pieces replaceable? So if the slide does break, is it we could just buy a new slide and not have to get a whole new That's a great question. Set? That's a great question. Yeah. I think it depends on the age of the apparatus. Mm -hmm. I think if the one we had wasn't so old, we could have replaced the slide. Once they get past a certain time, the manufacturer doesn't do parts anymore. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'll have DJ check that out. That's a great question. Right. May I have anything else on small ticket cap? No, I'm okay, good, thank you. Uh, that's it. Yep. And DJ was looking at a couple of vendors too. Mike, anything on small ticket cap? Nope. Nope. Good. Good. So my takeaway is while the resolution for small ticket on the next agenda, as listed except for 60K not to exceed, and Rich will have the estimates for the micro projects on the next agenda, looking to put the new authorization on for December. Fair enough? Great. Good. Um, moving along to municipal fee considerations, uh, as part of the packet here, Allison put together a comparison. Um, Allison, do you want to talk to that at all? You want me to just point out the two? I had just brought it up because the last fall, we were done something with 2016, we had a few events here and there. The building and the fire and some of Licenses, some of the licenses were at the statute. We can't raise them. Right. Uh, it's been some time, so I think that's what I've been getting. I think Christine had done a survey of some towns. Right. What they charge for trees and street openings and some of the other. So, those were the two that, um, when I reviewed with Allison, I thought, you know, obviously uh, uh, we can discuss any of them. Um, but the two that stuck out to me were the street opening permit. Um, this is a permit, as it was explained to me, and please correct me if I'm wrong, the utilities pay to the municipality when they need to open up the road uh, to work on whatever their utility might be. Um, as you can see, they're, they're paying fairer than $60. In comparison, Rumson is getting $200 and Spring Lake is getting $300. Um, so, you know, and seeing that and asking the question as to if we raise that rate, does the utility refuse to bring us service? The answer I got was no. Um, I thought it might be appropriate for us to, to look at that number and, and set a more reasonable rate for the borough. Um, additionally, not to get too far ahead, uh, I was on the trade uh, the Shade Tree Commission uh, meeting last week. Um, and this is being discussed by that commission. But just to point out, our um, tree removal permit rate is $25. Um, 
Spring Lake is at $75, and believe it or not, Manasquan is showing $500. Um, there's also some discussion in that meeting uh, regarding the fact that uh, the developers in town um, were capped at a certain amount and they were knocking out tons and tons of trees. So there's discussion about possibly increasing uh, that fee or getting rid of the cap um, so that they couldn't clear the entire property. Additionally, there was also some discussion that um, some of those trees were being knocked down before the permits were being provided, which was a source of frustration for Bill Brooks. So that's something that we might want to look at as well, as far as um, what the fee, what the fee is when someone does that, and how we're going to enforce it. Um, I mean, it's open for discussion here. If anyone wants to discuss is what you're seeing, a, do you have a recommendation, or are, is this more for discussion? I, I think it's more of a discussion right now and get a feel for you know what you guys think as well. And and you know, per personally, I definitely think that street opening permit should be raised. Yeah, I um, on that. yeah. All right, so um, I, I'm with you, Mayor, on that, especially when I look at the other towns. But because there's so much more, I'm wondering if when they come, and maybe the chief can answer this, they pay, do they have to have an officer um, for traffic and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, generally. Yeah. So that comes from a different fund. I'm wondering if they're paying for the officer yeah, I mean, in these other towns. Yeah, they, they, they would be, yes. Yes. Yes, that has nothing to do with the officer. That has to do with the, that. That fee is more for like the engineer to go out, make sure it's done right. If it, there's any problems, that's really what that's for. That every you know, it depends on what street and everything. But yes, if uh, other towns will uh, charge an engine fee for the police, that's nothing with that. And generally, they do. Yeah, they apply to me with the application fee, and they provide a cash repair deposit depending <clears throat> on the size of the opening of the group. I forward that to. Rich or Nick Korczynski, they review it. Um, we send a letter back to them. We copy the chief, so he's aware, and we ask them to reach out to the police chief to make sure and make arrangements for mm -hmm. that. Um, we hold the cash repair. They tell us when they're done. Rich or Nick go out and inspect it, and then we release that cash repair as long as they take care of the road. Is there a, is there a process for when they would be required? To have police presence, that I know they do it like on River Road, but if you're not it, on it, it's Church more, Street or something, whatever it disrupts traffic is probably the best way to explain it. Okay. Uh, so generally, yes, as long as you're going to block the road, this disrupt traffic. Is it? Uh, this might be a Teresa question. Do you think the rates are higher in these other municipalities because maybe they don't have an in-house per engineer and they have to pay a yeah. higher rate to the other? Not necessarily. And Rich's time is worth no less than an outside engineering firm's time. I mean, it's, it's all. I think one of the two things you have to discuss, and this is very well done for Allison um, Department. Uh, two that come to mind right away are you mentioned the street opening, uh, I mean, the um, tree removal permit and street opening. Both of them are part of larger ordinances. And we may, I mean, Richard mentioned this before. We probably would be best, even though we have to look at our fees as part of the fee ordinance, to look at those ordinances in their entirety, those two. Because I know the Shade Tree is working on uh, the tree removal uh, ordinance. And I know uh, Rich had in the past said he wanted to look at the street opening per, uh, ordinance in its entirety, inclusive of fees. And possibly have the utility post the bond for, say, $10,000, and we draw down from that. And then as they hit a certain minimum, then we would ask them to replenish. So right now they're doing it on a case by case basis. So one application, maybe a sixty dollar application fee and a twenty seven dollar cash repair because it's a three by three opening. Other times they have large main replacements, then it's thousands of dollars. And so uh, let me well, ask hold on. Let me just uh, pause it on the record. Mm -hmm. and deposit caught my eye. The cash yeah. yeah. Do you have to open the deposit or bond? I'm sorry, say that again. So the street opening, opening deposit of three dollars a square foot caught my eye. That's yeah. pennies when, when it's relative to the actual cost. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. This ordinance is from like 2008. It needs a little bit. It needs a little bit. Maybe Greg, <laughs> being as you have access to so many ordinances, and I'm sure you tweaked in your day. Well, I've had problems with the street openings before. Yeah. I was saying maybe maybe sending us a nice example of the street opening would be a good idea. 
And Shaytree's working the rest of it. Um, the, Betsy had mentioned something on the, she thought the landscaper uh, restoration was a little low as well. So, yes. and per vehicle, so you have a yeah, right now it's ten dollars. You can have ten vehicles. You can have one vehicle. Some I see charge an initial fee and then additional per truck. Mm -hmm. However you want. I think that's very low. I think yeah, definitely per vehicle, right? Because how do we know? Oh, it's on the other truck or something like right. that. Right. And they're dumping two weeks before fresh pickup or something like that. Two hours after. Yeah. Yeah, you can buy your wood. Now on the shade tree, I, mean, I don't want to take away from what the you know what the shade tree commission was talking about and they're going to be discussing that at, at uh further lane but the question is if we raise that number um does it effectively make people think twice about cutting down the trees five hundred dollars would that would, right? <laughs> that would. the other that would, number though, the squad numbers high my, my my concern though is the other side is yeah. the people then start trying to cut down trees without seeking out a permit and that's that's, that's one other that part that i do want to bring up and Recognize so you got to find that that nice medium number that that works good and you know makes people think twice but not start the issue. Yeah, I think um, I mean even if we doubled it, it's gonna because most of the time you're seeing they're taking out five or six trees too. And from that zoning meeting, it seems like this is a low hanging fruit, something that we could take an action on. Yeah, pretty quickly. Um, you, do you think there should be different rates for developers than there are for residents? That'd be tough to. Yeah. yeah Shakespeare was talking about it. I'm not sure you can do that. I thought Sal at the time said that they should have different rates for residents and a no. property owner's property owner. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. I think they were probably talking about clear cutting, is what they were talking about. You could charge more for that yes. based on the activity. Mm -hmm. right? So if you have a developer saying, have cut. You know, 14 trees are going to be an you know an exponential cost to that. You can frame it that way, but you can't frame developer versus. You, you can frame it three plus trees is this amount of money. Six plus trees yeah, is this charging, amount of money. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, yeah, you, you should frame the restrictions to target the activity you're talking about, not necessarily the person or the the entity. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. It's just, it's like percentage based now, isn't it? Like you can't clear cut, you have to leave like 20% of the trees. Oh. Mm -hmm. Within the like that. So yeah. Within, <clears throat> so maybe uh, we look at that instead of the numbers. Uh, can I just jump, can we stick to that or we can just jump around still? Okay. I just want to mm -hmm. jump back to the street opening permit. That permit uh, fee applies to both utilities and to residents. Mm -hmm. So when okay. we talk about if it was like a bond, if or if we switched it to a, a model like that, that would also apply to the homeowner. Yes. Yes. Because you can't. So you presumably can't. the homeowner is not the one digging themselves, so their contractor would obtain the bond. Okay. That makes sense. Right, but let's say it was the homeowner doing the work, or they were GCing the job, then mm -hmm. it would be on them to do yep. to do that. Okay. Um. And then the tree uh, uh, landscaper, the landscaper registration that's for the vehicle. That is for the license. We have nothing per vehicle. Okay. Okay. I just see it listed twice, but it's the same thing. Yep. We don't charge okay. per vehicle. It's just okay. $10. And then the bulk appliance pickup. The other, Rich, we do that in house. No, not anymore. Not anymore. We used to. the the fifteen dollar fee would pertain to like refrigerator, yeah, like a typical they call it the white well, air conditioner, refrigerator, water heater, and we have a contractor that does that. Our, Our trash, trash uh, vendor. Okay, and do we do they charge us a fee per item? No, when it comes to tip, it's, it's really the tipping fees that, that we're trying to recoup there because we do pay for the tipping and those leads are expensive. Okay. So we have to pay them individually. We pay them a flat fee, $30,000 a year to pick up all fault. But I say the reason we charge for traditionally, whether it was 
an outside contractor wouldn't burn them themselves. They're quite expensive to get rid of them. Right. So I'm wondering if that fee should be increased. Something to talk about. I mean, there's all you know, there's there are alternatives to having it go to bulk pickup. For example, I think there's a fridge program. They'll come, they'll pay you fifty bucks to pick up your fridge. I don't know what they do with it, but I think it's through the county or the state. Um, but I guess your other option for bulk would be to have whoever installs the new one right. to haul it away, right. or to I think mean, you can bring it out to the county. Yep. I think we could increase. Don't that forget, there's another option. What's that? You can dump it in the river. <laughs> so, so don't make it too tough for the people to get it picked up or too expensive. Yeah, honestly, that's what this? happens. In my town, that's what happens. They that's put it in, they put it in the natural area. So that, don't crazy. forget, there's always that other option if you make it too tough. Wow. Okay. So 15 sounds low to me. And if I want to get rid of my fridge, I would probably be willing to pay more than $15 to get rid of it. So that's me. If I you mean, want a new one. Um, the other one I thought that... Um, mm -hmm. I was looking at was the this store the pod storage. So there's a differentiation between whether it's construction or non-construction related. Allison, I'm sorry, it's I'm just, asking. It's the same, it's $25, but if it's tied to a construction, you're allowed 180 days. If not, I it's see. 30 days and you have to ask for extensions. I say. And when you get an extension, is it another $25 or is it? Not currently. I have recommended we we increase that because we've had issues in the past where these pods are sitting there for extended Year, periods of time. Oh, geez. Because it, it really becomes an enforcement issue and, and yeah. people have unforeseen circumstances they needed for an extended period of time. So our thought was they should pay a fee if they want the extension. We have to process it again, we have to review it again, and that we have to the site to make sure it wasn't moved or anything like that. I don't know if we were. I think we looked at doing maybe either one or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that. Yeah, we're going to have to permission from the police to put it in the street and mark it appropriately. So right. So one of the reason to it on the property, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Right. Can I ask a question? Um, I'm, I'm a little bit confused here. We have uh, $25 for pod storage and fair even for 30 days, which is non-construction. But then you have $180. It's supposed to be days. No, it should be 180 days. Cross out the dollar uh, sign. So it seems to me that that's that's pretty generous to the contractors, where non-construction is only 30 days, but the same fee is for construction for 180 days. No, it's $25 for every 30 days. Correct. $25 total. That's it. No, $25 total. 30 days are oh, 180. Oh, I see. I, I think that this um it just it feels to me that this is a bigger conversation in regards to our ordinances in general that maybe there should be um, a deeper dive when you pick the two that you mentioned mayor that seem to be kind of the eyesore that needed immediate attention and then possibly we then take this to a different level we look at the different ordinances and then we come back with a recommendation on each of the, the aspects you won't be able to get this done in 2021 anyway. No, right. so, yeah. So that's what I'm thinking. This is, and when we talk about strategic plan, like this is a tactic as part of this, you know, bigger strategic plan. That's just my thinking. Mike, anything? Um, no, just like I was saying before, I think I'm happy to hear our attorney put back with the street opening. Yeah. That um, wealth of knowledge and I think the tree removal permit uh, there is a lot of options there and they're, they're on the table um, I'm in favor of doing something I think um, definitely under the percentages clear cutting but 25 doesn't seem like much either so I, I mean even doubling it we're still in the in the range but that can start to add up pretty quickly sure yeah, I, I think we we honed in on some um, some pricing that is probably outdated by now. 
Just I'd like to make a non-serious, I, I think this is a good idea, but I am going to make a non-serious comment about lawn signs where we can charge for them and probably get rid of our taxes altogether. <laughs> this town has more lawn signs than any town, well, actually, with, notwithstanding Red Bank, they have more lawn signs than we do, but um, kidding aside, I think this is um, this is definitely worth pursuing, and I've got some ideas as well. I don't agree with everybody's, but that's okay. That's the beauty of this whole thing, so. You put it back on the workshop in uh, you know maybe second meeting in January or first meeting in Feb. Yeah, maybe some recommendations come forward before the meeting, so it's just. Um, Can we ask the department to, to give us something to put on. You know, what they know and they they provided some of that information, but not all. Yeah, that would be perfect. Yeah, I think it would be great to bring this back and to reconsider some of these um, bees. And I also think it's very funny that if your cat is neutered, it's cheaper than if your cat is not neutered. So very funny. Yes. Uh, Allison, thank you for putting that together. Thank you. Um, moving on to the Burn Employee Policy Manual. Very, Teresa. This will be very quick there. Uh, I am. Close to completing um, my uh, draft of uh, our new policies and procedures manual. And I'm also going to have a uh, volunteer manual, which is uh, strictly, you know, one's obviously for all employees and one's for, for all volunteers. Um, uh, they have required policies. Uh, they were recently redone by the MEL, which is the Municipal Excess Liability umbrella that goes over the, your joint insurance funds. And uh, as it turns out, Matthew Jacoby, who's also our labor counsel, you know, was contracted by the MEL to rewrite the, a model policy and procedures manual. So that's what I'm using um, for my base and customizing it for Fairhaven for things that pertain just to us. And uh, ultimately we have to adopt that uh, prior to your end. I may get it out to you, you know, early enough that we can adopt the next meeting. Um, but basically, fundamentally, prior to the year end, our borough attorney has to attest to our GIF that we have at the very least these base policies in our, and I'm sure Greg's certainly assigned this for other towns too, so it's mentioned a whole lot. I have shared drafts already, for, or at least the, the model policies with uh, our personnel committee. Um, and uh, the only thing uh, I spoke to Councilman Christopher Keith the other day, who's the chair of personnel. Uh, there are some policies that are optional, um, and most of them I, I included um, if it made sense. Some of them I didn't if it didn't make sense. And I'll have May take a, and Beth to take a look at that to make sure that they concur with what I left out as on the optional policies. Get a copy to you guys, get a copy to Greg. Hopefully, we'll either approve it at this meeting or the meeting in December, and Greg can get that certification and then prior to your end, and we'll be good to go. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Um, next up is the public comment on agenda items. Please stand and identify yourself by clearly stating your name and address for the record. Please observe a time limit of three minutes. These are only for items that are listed on the agenda, please. At the end of this meeting, we will have the uh, good for the borough where you can speak about anything and everything. Um, does anybody have any public comments on agenda items? Anybody, Teresa, is there uh, anyone online? Zoom? I don't see any hands raised. Anybody on Zoom have any public comments on agenda? Raise your hand, please. Okay. All right, let's Oh, move. no, I do have one up. Carolyn Ferguson. Let's recognize Carolyn. Go ahead, Carolyn. You can unmute yourself. Carolyn, how are you? Hi, it's Carolyn Ferguson, 7th Colonial Court. Um, I just want to uh, make sure that as the fees are being considered, that the impact to commercial property your owners is considered in addition to homeowners. That's it. Uh, thank you for your uh, call, Carolyn. Absolutely, we will definitely uh, keep that in mind as we discuss how we how we approach these moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is that Teresa? That's it. Sir. That's it. All right. Um, approval minutes. May I have a motion to approve the October twelfth regular meeting minutes? So Second. Roll call. Council members, Chris Nurkey? Yes. Koch? Yes. McCabe? Yes. McHugh? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. May I have a motion to approve the October 25th regular session and executive session meeting minutes? I have a question on them, please. 
And yes. it, does this fall under approval of the minutes or maybe old business? There were two other topics that I thought we had some follow up from the October 25th meeting. I was asking for that meeting. Should I bring them up now or wait for maybe it's old business? Are they related to the minutes? It's, they're not in the minutes, so that's why I'm, it was part of a conversation. I just didn't see them there. One piece is related to the minutes. It's in regards to uh, Mrs. Hoey, when she came in and she gave us the presentation on the Fairhaven Field upgrades. I just didn't know if there was any further follow-up with rec committee or- I sent that out to the full governing body. Or the follow-up to that? To her whole presentation. She yes. didn't actually give the presentation here. She yes. just spoke about it and then we sent it out to the full governing body. Okay, and then from that, was there supposed to be a connection with her and the rec committee? I'm just trying to connect she points here. Some prior to coming to the four hours. Okay. They, Believe we've heard that it would be a council, and that's why she came and brought it So, when it comes to us, now we have the presentation. What would the next steps be? I just thought it was she's looking really to raise, she's looking to raise two million dollars. Yeah, so technically, the next steps would be in the fundraising portion of that. Okay, all right. I just want I'm just trying to go full circle here. Um, the other point was in regards to our conversation on vandalism, mm -hmm. and there were three points of contact for that, and we asked for one point, so it was. The Parks and Rec Committee, the Police Department, and DPW. I don't recall who's going to take it away. I thought maybe the, the Police Department might, that we were just going to come it's, back. It feels like it's yeah, it, still it under active investigation. Somewhere. Okay. They're still investigating. Were we to going check to do, report. And were we going to do anything? I thought that we were going to bring some uh, awareness more to the community by posting other pictures or, or just, I don't know if that's the right thing to do. Idea. What was that? Chief didn't like the idea of putting the pictures out when he had an active investigation going on. Got it. Okay. And he's also, he's even reaching out further beyond DPW and coordinating with the superintendent. Um, for that. Uh, and we may speak to the superintendent, you know, it's actively being worked on. So, okay. um, but, you know, I've been here 35 years and, you know, it happens, you know, in the past. Sure. Uh, you get this little, like, cluster of it, and it'll be quiet for a long time. So. It's not something that's ever happened before. You know, Mr. Knight was a little worried about Mr. Knight. Kind of going to be, it could be bad. But we had a lot of guys, but we actually had nothing on Mr. Knight. So that's maybe something at all. Probably the quietest Mr. Knight we ever had, actually. So, Kirk, you work? Okay. I just didn't want to lose those two points that we had in the meeting. Um, okay. Can I, can I just add one Please. thing to that? The first thing that DJ did do, though, was Originally, the doors were on, on time blocks. Mm -hmm. They were set to, to lock at nine o'clock prior to the vandalism. He's moved it up to 6 30 p.m. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Good. I'm good. But can we move back to a motion to approve the October 25th regular session, executive session meeting minutes? Motion. Second. Roll call. Council members. Koch? Yes. McHugh? Yes. Frederick? Yes. Does anyone have any old business they would like to discuss? I think we just did. Just did. <laughs> <laughs> anyone else have any old business they would like to discuss? <laughs> See how efficient I am there? Right. So let's move on to new business. Um, uh, Councilwoman Neff is not here tonight, so for finance, uh, Teresa. We already gave the, I, I, okay. I, as what we talked about tonight is a sum total of what we need to discuss in finance. So. Uh, okay, so moving on uh, to personnel. Councilwoman Crystal Keith. No, it's on personnel. Thank you. Uh, planning and zoning. Councilwoman Koch, and then you can follow that up as well with parks and recreation and communications, please. Okay. Uh, first of all, the zoning board meetings that were scheduled for November 10th and 18th this month have been canceled due to a lack of agenda. Uh, our next planning board meeting will be November 16th, and that is in person. Uh, for parks and recreation, um, a Halloween uh, house decorating contest results are in. Uh, the first place winners was the Barrett family at 83 Princeton Road. The second uh, winners were the Cole family at 123 uh, Grange Avenue. And third place winner uh, was the Zoster family at 30 Church Street. Tracy, was that your biggest winner of the week? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just add that it's with Eva, my daughter's work. And uh, just like <laughs> 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 I'll let you wrap it up. Yes. <laughs> 
baseball signups uh, are available, not baseball, basketball <laughs> signups are available on the borough website. Uh, this Veterans Day, which will be Thursday, uh, we'll, we'll have a ceremony in Memorial Park at 11 o'clock. Uh, all of our residents, are, and especially our veterans, are invited to attend. Uh, Small Business Saturday will be the uh, on November 27th, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, which is um, uh, our traditional time for celebrating Small Business Saturday. Uh, I, I neglected to add that the Veterans Day ceremony will be streamed on Facebook. And uh, Santa in the Park and the Fairhaven Business Stroll are scheduled for Friday evening at six o'clock on December 10th. And that is it. Before Later. you move on, I have, uh, one question on Veterans Day. Um, last year we did the signs. I know we collected most of them. Did you guys direct to sign or not decide to? Put that down? Okay, thank you. We did it because we couldn't have the yeah. ceremony in the park. <clears throat> There's a new permit fee for that, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> the noise violation when you, when you pump, when you go past the house, we can make some money on that too. Uh, uh, thank you, Councilwoman Koch. Uh, moving on, uh, Councilman McHugh, Police Fire, Office of Emergency Management, as well as Engineering and DPW, please. Uh, Matthew, pretty much talked about, I was going to talk um, for fire specifically. Councilman Rodriguez has about the air packs and yeah, basically, they're just on like a rotating basis. So, nothing, it's not a big flash to the system financial wise. Um, I promise to ask that next year as well. Cool. And then, um, and so we kind of moved off the radios. Um, they're getting, they're expensive, but um, we're lucky in our fire department. We have firemen who also work for dispatch in the county. So, they kind of know. Um, which way it's going and it's going digital. So you pretty much are gonna, we're gonna have to buy these. We bought some already. They're in the ambulances, fire trucks, I believe, and the police cars. But um it's a big ticket item and we're probably just gonna have to buy all those in one fell swoop. But I think the technology is still getting worked out a little bit and different types of models, but that's kind of coming down the pipe. They're switching from analog to digital. Um, and that's county dispatch, so we pretty much have to get that. Um, for engineering and DPW, we had a nice meeting with finance. Um, Rich went over um, projects in the queue. Uh, we discussed how can we squeeze in Oakland into the mix, um, generally leaning towards adding it, not kind of kicking something else out. Um, Rich, are you still going to go and look at um, estimating the whole run from Rutgers to Prospect and doing a new update on just the Oakland to Harrison? I'll, or are we just going to do the Oakland? I'll provide a detailed enough estimate so you can see what each segments are going to be. So if it's um, Prospect to Harrison or just Oakland to Harrison, or Harrison to Rutgers, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll break it out so you have enough. Yeah, because basically we were at the impasse of we feel like there's an urgency there with school age children and just the other people that were saying, you know, walking dogs, um, getting out on that street, but also, um, I don't put Councilwoman, put words in her mouth, they're saying, yeah, but she was, Councilwoman Neff was talking about, you know, do we rush this or do we try to get it really right and have all the options? Um, and it's on a county road, maybe there's some grants available. If we do the whole run, um, maybe kind of what you're talking about, the cost benefit analysis, scope of work. So just trying to get all that information before we make a decision on, do we push that in with all the other small ticket capital or do the big run? Um, and then, uh, engineer Gardella just went over some of the other small ticket capital things, front end loader, replacing things. Uh, I think the finance committee with this three year projection is working on nice because there's always surprises, but we can kind of minimize the ups and, ups and downs from the capital, which is nice. Thank you, Councilman McHugh. Uh, borough facilities, Councilman Rodriguez. 
Thank you. Um, I'll keep it short. Um, with the facilities projects going on, um, we've been meeting um, with the notwithstanding last week, we took off every two weeks. Um, the mayor and myself and uh, Teresa and Rich, we've been interviewing um, owner reps religiously on a very regular basis. Um, and the uh, result from that is there's a wide range of um, professionals out there uh, with um, wide ranging um, fee structures and wide ranging uh, experience levels, both with municipal buildings and, and large projects. So um, we don't have a recommendation for the uh, council yet. We will likely bring it to the facilities committee to um, talk through. And then once the facilities committee um, settles on that um, after a number of interviews, uh, we will bring that back here. We do think though, that the um, we've learned a lot throughout the process, and we do think that it is um, you know either close to a full time job or a full time job to build these two buildings. It's a full time job just to build one building, um, let alone two. And since Rich has a full time job, um, we think that we should keep him doing his full time job rather than pulling him off of everything and putting him on the buildings. Um, so that's part of the rationale. Uh, we will um, come back with a. Full recommendation shortly. We have a meeting tomorrow night. Please, we have a meeting tomorrow night. We got postponed. Uh, there was something going on last Tuesday. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> it was um, so we moved uh, <laughs> our facilities committee from last Tuesday to this Tuesday. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, moving along, consent agenda resolutions 2021 237, appointments to the Shade Tree Commission. 2021-238, Chapter 159, Comcast Cable Technology Grant. Uh, we received a check for $5,500 for a one-time technology grant as per Ordinance 2019-05. 2021-239, Special Council Meeting, set for November 15th, 7 p.m. via Zoom. 2021-240, Executive Session, Contract nego Negotiations. 2021-241, Authorized Borough Administrator signed Memorandum of Understanding with Monmouth County for Ballot Dropbox Security Camera, 2021-242, Amend Resolution Number 2021-235, School Crossing Guard Status for Sergio Germanario, and 2021-243, Payment of Vouchers. Before I move for an offer, does anyone have questions? Um, the Special Council Meeting, November 15th at 7 p.m. I am on a flight, so I can't call in. So I don't know the impact of that, or I mean that's been, that's the Kimmy hands and what was exactly happening at that meeting? Just the looking award at the bids, award bid. awarding the bid, depending on how they come. Okay. Yeah. Um, so will they be in? When will we have a chance to look at the bids? Before. We're receiving bids 10 a.m. next Wednesday. Okay. I'm going to send Greg, depending on how many bids we get back. We have seven who picked up the packet or we'll send that. Um, I will send Greg two of them, unless he requires another one. Two of them. And then we get back okay. for review. And then he, Rich, will all make sure everything's in compliance for the PPA. And then we'll have a resolution of And then ultimately, I make a recommendation okay. to the administrator okay. based on the bid opening uh, subject to review of the borough. Greg, is there is there a thing such as that? This may be a really hard question. Is there a proxy? I mean, if, if she had a no, no got to be present for the meeting. Yeah, yeah let's say yes. Okay. And just generally, and this might help Suzanne, my understanding is that the bid is awarded to the lowest bidder unless there's a reason that the borough is declining to work with that bidder or something. Right. We would have to have prior negative experience with that particular bidder of okay. ourselves. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I, it is what it is. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, Thank you. Though, that was my question about the project. Anyone else? Uh, do I have an offer? Motion. Second. Roll call. Sorry. 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 Sorry.
Well, it's really a formality to come here. I, I was saying there's an alternate decision, but it's already been made. So if we're just going to pick the lowest one, then we're just going to, it's a formality. Okay, so that's real. Okay. It's perfect. either yes or no, you're going to award it or not at all. Okay. I can include a copy of the lowest responsible bidder and the recommendation. Sorry, I thought it was an alternate. Yeah, okay, there was one concept. Right. Perfect. perfect. So so and then if you so want to just one. Yeah, well, yeah. Thank you. Great. Right. Right. Let's, let's go back. Do I have an offer? Motion. Second. We'll call. Councilmember <laughs> T. Yes. Cobb. Yes. McDade. Yes. McHugh. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Okay, as to the department reports from October 2021, the municipal clerk, the bill of license, and budget status. Uh, motion to accept. Yep. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. Motion. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <Sorry>. Next up. <laughs> Next up for, is the uh, good of the borough. Please stand and identify yourself by clearly stating your name and address for the record. Please observe a time limit of three minutes. And I'd like to open the I, floor. I have one there. Um, the Fairhaven Natural Area has a volunteer cleanup day scheduled for this weekend, November 13th and 14th, Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Come for an hour, come for all four. Um, bring some tools, some gloves, and we will be doing some work. There is a sign up. If you want to sign up or you need more information, check myself. Carolyn Ferguson, um, or anybody who's on the Natural Area Committee, it's actually a lot of fun and very um, cathartic to pull vines off of trees. <laughs> so hopefully you can come out for a little bit this weekend. Thank you. I'd like to dovetail on that because the um, the rain date for the Fairhaven Field recreational area, not the natural area, is the 13th. And I believe it's from 9 um, a.m. to 1 p.m. What and time was the other one? Yeah. Oh, so we're going to crawling all over the 80 acres. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and then in very uh, fields. Very good. Uh, anyone else go to the borough in present? If you're on um, Zoom, you can raise your hand. If you're ready to go to the borough and you'll be recognized. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. So I thought that brush a lot. This is coming from a, another party. Happens to live with me. <laughs> the brush pickup. So you have leaf and you have sticks, right? So today, if there's the leaves and sticks happen to be in the pile, it's not being picked up. So last week, the week before, there was a storm and there was a great deal of sticks that were fallen trees, things like that. A lot on Lewis Point, I called Teresa on that specifically. Then now you have the leaves that have been put on top of these sticks. So it is now taking the brush and I don't know what you call it, stick pickup? What is, what's that called? Brush. 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 That are not picked up because it's commingled with the sticks right now, and they're not picking them up because of that. Well, how so how sticks, do we win this? How does the sticks get there? Because of the storm. So you had the leaves, you had the storm. There's just this whole nature, nature yeah. like life happens. So I I know that this I I know that I beat this horse, but for example, on Briarwood, they just did a great job. They cleaned up all the leaves. Landscapers came two hours later. It is packed with leaves again. You can't drive down Lewis Point Road was a danger zone with the wire going down last week because of the storm. Then I don't know if the electrical company had to take down trees and all the, the big limbs or if they fell. Though that wasn't picked up for days. And you had the kids coming down to go on the bike up to sickle school. It was it was a danger zone. I just I don't know what the answer is. But I know that in our town, we have to be able to do something about this. You drive through Rumson, drive through Little Silver, you don't have these type of, of mass 
brush and leap. And I, I don't know what the answer, knowing that DPW is overworked with the schedule and all that. I appreciate that. I don't know the answer. Teresa, is there a manpower for between the operations going on in some of our neighboring towns? Would be fair to say. Teresa, is there a significant manpower differential? That's what I said to the person who didn't work. Someone else said that as well. My yes. only question here is that is on constant contact, do we have the ability to send out um, notifications just based on the zone that people are in? We can set, uh, well, the zone's a little harder on constant contact. I mean, we could can, we can give them an update that, that says you're in zone A this week, but we just can't send to zone A. Okay. It's not set that was that my way. question. I was wondering if you got something specifically just to you that said your zone is, you know, you picked, have yeah. your leaves out seven days from today because otherwise you're going to miss that cutoff. It might be helpful. We, we have, People that tell the landscapers you got to get it done. We have a, a, a fairly high rate of compliance. The problem mm -hmm. is even if you have a 10% people out of compliance, it's going to stick out your sore thumb. Mm -hmm. It's probably a little even higher than that. We probably have about 92 or 93 percent of people that pretty much follow the program. Right. But the landscapers are problematic because yeah. they come when they come and they put stuff out. And um, I, you know, the brush pile, JCP and I did cut some and, and leave. And when they're in an emergency situation like that, they do leave it and we do come back and get it. But uh, I talked to this as a director of public works and I explained to you they were in zone A last week. And they went through zone A and then they picked up storm related brush at the end because we're done with brush. They were done with brush for you know November. But considering we had the storm, then they they zone B is where you are. They were gonna get the leaves and then pick them up at the end of the week. And then same thing when they went to zone C. Mm -hmm. You know, but they they do, you know, they they don't forget we take them to two separate places. So you know, you can't say let's just scoop it all off sure. and take it someplace. So they they go get the leaves first and our Disposal fees for recycling and brush and leaves are significantly increased in the last few years. I just got a purchase order for eighteen thousand dollars to get rid of leaves on top of you know, and I had to transfer money into that line. We'd already blown through that in the spring mm -hmm. because they, they, you know, one of the major ones got shut down by the DEP, and you know we had to scramble to get somebody, and the fees are higher, so it's it's ongoing. Mm -hmm. But you know, at some point, you know, it, it, if you if you really look to want to increase those services. I know certain towns by me that they have crews that do nothing but pick up Russian leaves. Well, your manpower study, Teresa, help. I know we talked about there's a manpower study that we're looking to do. We have, uh, I mean, Rich has, we have a pretty resources. solid, we haven't really presented it to you guys yet, but we have a fairly solid idea on, on manpower numbers. And you know, don't forget that every time you bring out another park, every time you bring out another building, all of these things are, you know, are going to require maintenance, you know, and something that you're going to have to grow into over time because you just can't. Staff up like that because you have cap considerations and otherwise. No. Benny Ann does send out the constant contact. She does post on Facebook what zones are going to be. And a lot of neighbors do patrol and report it. And Benny Ann has been known to contact that when I say them. Tell them to get back. I, I, take it away. I, no, that's good. Because yeah. they're given the calendar, the schedule, the zones are color coded for them. 100%. So that they could do that. But it's out there. My question is whether the residents are digesting the information. Yep. You know, everyone's going in a million different directions with kids and school and activities and whatever it might be. I'm not sure that looking at that calendar or looking at Facebook to see when that brush schedule is, it matters to them. They have the landscaper that comes every Tuesday and they just figure that they're going to put the leaves in the street. And I think some people might think their landscapers know the schedule on their own. Well, some of them do call and say, right. I just want to make sure I'm right because I'm pulling my landscaper again to tell him this is, don't come to me sure. until this week. Some are getting it, some are. We're trying and Let's improving. Move it forward. But thank you, Councilman. Councilman. Yeah, I just wanted to say, as a result of uh, last Tuesday, I made a, a joke about the facilities committee, but just wanted to congratulate uh, Councilman Koch, Councilman McCabe, um, Tracy Cole. Um, also, thank the folks that ran in town who didn't win, um, because it takes a lot to put yourself out there. Yes. And uh, I think a round of applause is in order. <laughs> Anyone else go to the borough? I see one hand up here, sir. Um, I think it's Ruth Blazer. Go ahead, Ruth. Can I mute yourself? I did. Okay. Hi, Ruth. How are you? Uh, on the subject of the brush, uh, I understand Susan O'Brien sent a very cogent letter to the council 
because of the way the zones are configured, sometimes one side of a street is in one zone and the other side of the street is in another zone. You've really got to examine this a lot more closely. Number two, okay, McCarter's Pond is now clear, even though the bubblers aren't on, but Schwenker's Pond still has scum on top of it. Have you made any firm plans to do something about this? Because we now own it and it's an eyesore. If you're, com if you're complaining about how the brush looks and everything else, I think Schwenker's Pond is an Olympic eyesore. And you've got to do something before you spend money on anything else. Plus, put in your cinder trail, which you had promised when you bought it, that hasn't been installed. There are now trees on the bank of Schwenker's Pond that are falling into the pond. This is not something you can just kick the can down the road on. You've got to actually do something. Next subject, road construction on River Road because of the water main. We were well aware of what was going to happen, but not as bad as it did. They worked in front of my house with strobe lights or Klieg lights or whatever they are. A couple nights, one till 2.30 in the morning, one till 4.30 in the morning. And every time that vehicle backed up, it beeped. I feel very sorry for people who had small children that they wanted to keep asleep. I think this was very poorly handled. And on that subject, where the, we've got construction and we're parking police cars with their array of lights on, wouldn't it be a lot cheaper and wouldn't we need less police cars if we used sawhorses with lights on them? They don't need to be manned. They don't have to be paid for with insurance and gas and whatever. We've got to get costs down, folks. It is possible to lower taxes. Ruth, I missed also, the last one. What was the last recommendation? <laughs> To use saw horses with, with flashing lights on it instead of the manpower of the police and the police cars with their array running and their motor running. The next one, uh, when you're great considering raising fees or charging for more things, consider the seniors in town on fixed incomes. The seniors seem to be forgotten there. They're, well, Social Security does not go up to meet the expenses of Fair Haven. And I don't think anybody who's lived in town for a goodly number of years, raised their family, paid off three and four bond issues, should be forced to move because you're raising your fees or expecting them to pay a fee for something they never had to pay for before. Next subject, signs. If we pay our taxes and we own our property, I think the borough has overreached itself on many points, expecting too many permits. And if you've got a contractor doing work in your house, the borough should not be involved, should not be involved. Do not, we are res responsible for protecting ourselves. And I don't need the borough sticking its nose in whether I've changed my water heater or my furnace or whatever. Pretty soon you're going to start expecting us to pay for a permit to paint our house. It's ridiculous. It is totally ridiculous. You have overreached. You have absolutely no business getting between a person and their contractor. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Ruth, um, and, your, and your passion for the borough. Um, I just, I made a few notes personally here. If anyone else wants to respond, they can as well. On, on the fees, um, considering the seniors, much as we uh, mentioned, we would uh, consider the business community absolutely 100%. Uh, we're not going to make any decisions in haste. Um, we're we're going to make sure that uh, we're considering everyone uh, who's involved in with this borough is so important to the, to the council. Um, as far as the soul horses with flashing lights, I'll, I'll talk to... Uh, Chief McGovern, uh, I'm sure there's a reason that, uh, you know, we have a police force there. Uh, obviously we have the roads blocked off at night and we want, we want to ensure the safety of not only everyone working, but all of our residents. Um, I'd like to, you know, apologize to you for everything you've had to deal with with this water main replacement. It hasn't been easy on anyone. Um, the choice to, to 
uh, do this at night was made with very careful consideration. Um, Chief McGovern's been doing this for a very long time. Uh, I promise you, he has sleepless nights himself worrying about the safety of the residents and the children of this town. And that's the primary reason that he decided to do it at night. Um, and, and as terrible as you know, this has been for the residents that live on that road, I hope they know that um, this work will last them 70 years with, with uh, you know, improvement of, of the water that they're drinking. And um, it was, it was uh, worth it from that perspective. As far as the brush zones, I, I believe that um, that was sent rich. Uh, you've seen that proposal. Him and his team will look at it and any improvements that they can make. Obviously, I think they're, they're considering. Um, and if we have any changes on that, we'll be sure to communicate them to you, Mrs. Glazer. Um, as far as Schwenker's Pond, that was the only point you made uh, that I do want to make sure that I personally respond to one comment you made that we shouldn't do anything else until we clear up Schwenker's Pond. It's my personal opinion um, that the safety uh, you know, as it, as it relates to sidewalks on Oak Lawn and uh, the safety of a project, um, you know, as far as fi fixing sidewalks at the gentry where kids can actually um, be seriously injured is a, a more important endeavor, but that doesn't mean that Schrenker's Pond is not important. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that I had those on the record. Uh, I don't know if anyone else wanted to speak to Mrs. Blazer's points. Yeah, Ruth, thank you. Um, Mayor, you mentioned it already. Uh, you reminded me of the email Mrs. O'Brien sent, and I thought it was very thoughtful and just was curious to see. But again, just got the update that uh, Rich has it, and if there's any takeaways from the emails that, that, that can be implemented. But I thank Mrs. O'Brien for her work. It was really thoughtful, and I thought very logical. But I'm not, I don't have enough of the operation behind it to understand that. So I'll leave that in the hands of the experts with Rich and so forth. Thank you for your comments. Yes. Please state your name. You can still stand. That's perfect. I'm Marty Ever, 33 Hans Road, Fairhaven. I'm I'm in Brush Hill. That's all I have to say um, about what's going on with my lawn service. Who constantly tells me every time I have to call them because they seem to dump things on my property right after pickup. And I call them and they tell me that Fairhaven is absolutely the worst town that they have to deal with. And they cannot adhere to all the different town schedules. So Allison, I'm hoping that you know a landscape or a lawn service that does adhere to our schedule because I will change if I can, but I have called many and they're not accepting new customers. So I'm out there putting everything back on my lawn after I've paid them to blow everything out. Mm -hmm. And it is every single time now. Um, and the other problem that we seem to have on hands are probably Fairhaven Road. There's probably a really good reason why it was done this way. But I do have to say for the residents, it's a bit of an issue, is that these streets that go all the way through have been divided in half. So the residents on one side are in zone A and the residents on the other side are in zone B. So we constantly have piles of weeds on either side of the road. And as you said, people are, it, it's very hard. And as Ruth said, the zones don't correspond to your trash pickup. And everybody knows when their trash pickup is. So people get confused as to when their zone is. And I've also seen a lot of neighbors just like panic and just take their stuff and take it over the other side of the road to a neighbor's property, which, you know, was pretty terrible, really. But I understand what they're doing it. So if there's, I, I would just ask if you could look at the brush pickup. I do think there's a need to sort of readdress what it is. And if we're going to have any resident input, I'd be happy to sit in and let me know what my experience is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marty. Thank you. We'll place Professor hand up again. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Ruth. I have a question. Little Silver had a 
leaf and brush schedule that after two or three years finally threw up their hands and just said, put it out and we'll get to it when we get to it. And maybe that's the way to go. Check with them to see how it's working out. Thank you. Okay, um, Mrs. Blazer, I, the only thing I say to that is I also heard from the other side that you don't want the taxes to go up. If people are just putting out their brush and leaf whenever they want, that's a huge manpower issue. And that's something that is going to significantly alter your taxes. I don't know if I heard that correctly, but if I did understand it correctly, how you're saying it, um, that's going to increase your taxes, not lower them. So, um, you know, yeah, we could do that. I mean, we could, we could, we could uh, buy a ton of trucks and hire a ton of employees, but you know, there's going to be a fiscal impact on the residents of this borough, and I, I don't think it's one that you know that you're, you're going to be comfortable with. So it's also a stormwater. Uh, violation. Do that Anyone else? Anything? No, sorry, I don't see anybody else here. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? <laughs> All right, we're going to be uh, moving to an executive session. No formal action will be taken. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Thank you. 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 Th